In this video, we are going to look at how to calculate consumer surplus. So let's look at an example. So we have we went out there, collected some data. Uh, we asked people on the street how much they are willing to pay to use Facebook for one hour. And this is the information we collected. Uh, so let's let's look at the data we have. Uh, so so 12 people told us they will be willing to pay $12, sorry, willing to pay $10 an hour to use Facebook. Uh, eight people said they will be willing to pay $12. Five persons said they were willing to pay $15 and so on. Uh, and zero person or zero people said they will be willing to pay $25. So what is this willingness to pay? Willingness to pay here is the maximum amount that they are willing to pay. Okay, to use Facebook for one hour. This is also called the marginal benefit, right, of using Facebook for one hour. So that is for these 12 folks, the marginal benefit or the benefit of using Facebook for one hour is equal to $10. Okay, so the consumer surplus when you have this information is just basically uh, equal to, so the consumer surplus. So the consumer surplus uh, is, is equal to willingness to pay. I'll write it in short. Willingness to pay minus the price. The price that you actually pay. So how much you are willing to pay minus the price that you actually pay. So in this case, the surplus is just basically how much you pay over the price. Okay. So this is how much you value the good and the price is how much you actually pay. So if your valuation of the good is higher than how much you pay, then you have a consumer surplus. Okay, so let's say, for example, that uh, Facebook sets the price of using Facebook at, say, $10 an hour. Okay. So $10 an hour. All right, so we can calculate the consumer surplus for all this group uh, that we surveyed. Okay, so for the 12 persons willing to pay uh, $10, the consumer surplus will be 10 minus 10, okay, which is equal to zero. So it's zero for each person, okay. Uh, for the eight people willing to pay $12, consumer surplus will be 12 minus 10, okay, which is what we call the two for each person. And we have eight people. So the total consumer surplus for the eight persons is 16. We can calculate for the rest. Uh, for those willing to pay 15, you have 15 minus 10, which is equal to five. We have five people. So the surplus is 25. For those willing to pay 18, you have 18 minus 10, which is eight. We have three people there. So the surplus for the group is 24. For those willing to pay 20, okay. Price is 10. The surplus per person is 10. We have two people. So the surplus is 20. Now, if we add all of the surpluses, so 0 plus 16 plus 25 uh, plus 24 and 20, we get a total surplus of 85. Okay, so for this group of uh, consumers that we surveyed, uh, the consumer surplus for all of them, okay, the consumer surplus or what you call the total consumer surplus is equal to 85. Now, there are two ways of calculating consumer surplus. You can calculate it using information in a table like this or you can calculate it using information in a demand curve 
on a graph okay so when you have a table of willingness to pay and price the consumer surplus can be calculated basically as the difference between willingness to pay which is the valuation of the product minus how much you actually pay for for the good okay i hope this helps uh, thank you for watching